wonderful Jesus. Come on, slip those hands up and let's praise the Lord. Bible said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Praise him with all your might and praise him with all your strength. Let everything, everything has breath. Praise ye the Lord. I tell you what I want you to do. I want you to reach up and catch someone by the hand and look them in the face and say something good. It's going to happen to you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Remember this, that God loves you. He's concerned about you. And the Lord wants to bless you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to meet your needs. Hallelujah. You may be seated. We thank God for being here. My soul has just been bubbling on, thinking about the good things of God. Hallelujah. God is good. He's concerned about us. All right, I want you to reach and get your Bibles and let's turn to the Word of God. We're going to the book of Genesis. Pray the third chapter, and we want the first and second verse. Okay. And I want you to listen to the reading of the word of God. And when Rachel and when Rachel saw that she bad Jacob, saw that she bad Jacob, Jacob, no children, no children. Rachel envied her Rachel sister. Rachel envied her sister. And said, unto Jacob, and said unto Jacob, Give me children. Give me children. Or else I die. Or else I die. And Jacob's anger and was Jacob's kindled, anger was killed against Rachel. Against Rachel. And he said, And he said, Am I in God's am, stead? Am I in God's stead? Who have withheld from Who have withheld from thee the fruit of the world? The fruit of your womb. We thank God for the reading of his word. Now the message coming from the latter portion of this first verse. Where well, Rachel said, Give me children, or else I die. Give me children or else I die. Can you imagine a woman, pray God, if she wasn't able to bear children, she'd rather die. That's what Rachel said. She, she wanted to bear children. And if I can't bear any children, then let me die. Now, this woman had a beautiful home. Why was she feeling like this? She had a beautiful home. She had a devoted husband that loved her. He had to love her Amen. to work 14 years for her. Amen. But in, in spite of all of this, this woman, because she was buried, because she was burdened, she wanted to bear, not a child, but to bear children. And a womb was set up, she couldn't. Amen. And she would rather die. Praise God, if she couldn't bear any children. When I think of this scripture, I think about the church. Wouldn't it be beautiful if the church was that bad and that concern about bringing children into the kingdom of God? This woman was stirred. If there was a time that, now listen, don't cut me out before I get started. Listen to the whole message. If the church was this concerned about bringing children into the kingdom, we'd see a lot more happening, a lot more going forth. Amen. Amen. This woman was hungry. She was disturbed. Now, back in those days, it was a disgrace to not to be able to bear children. But it's a far cry today from what it was back in those days. We're living in a time now that women don't want to bear children. They even plead and press the law where I can have an abortion. They're marching in the street. Would you ever dream that the time would come when women was marching in the street and said, let me kill my baby? Hallelujah. But this woman was crying because she couldn't. And she wanted to bear children. Now, let's take a picture of it. Amen. I'm persuaded to believe that Rachel was a beautiful woman. Amen. She was built like a woman. Amen. She talked like a woman. She looked like a woman. Amen. Hallelujah. She was a woman. But she was unable to produce. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I don't feel like Lee, her sister, was as beautiful as Rachel. But Lee had the, the woman that liked. Because she was able to produce. She had cherubims running around. 
And when Rachel began to look at this, she had a burden because she wanted to produce what she was unable to produce. She looked like a woman. When I take a look at many churches today, they look like a church. They carry it on like a church, but they're unable to produce. They're unable to bring children into the kingdom of God. Oh, some of them have a crowd, but they're unable to birth children into the kingdom of God. Why? Because the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. All things become new. When you get saved, when you get born again, bring it, your life changes. Give me children or else I die. Now look, a nation that failed to bring forth children soon dies. A country that failed to bring forth children soon dies. A community that failed to bring forth children soon ceased to be a community. And when a family, pray God, refuse uh, to reduce children, the family name died. Amen. Amen. Amen? And when a church failed to produce, it dies. Amen. Oh, you listen to me. Now, praise God, this woman was crying. She was burdened down. Give me children or else I die. When I take a look at the church today, when I look back a few years, then my heart grieves when I see what's going forth now in the name of the church. The pastor Paul said the last days, that would be a form of godliness, but denying the power they are. Years ago, people was born into the kingdom of God. When they came in, they were saved. They were delivered. They was filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm not saying all, but many of our churches of the day are just entertainment centers. Amen. You go out there to be entertained. Preachers no longer preach the gospel of deliverance. They become great storytellers, great actors great comedians but they will not preach the gospel of deliverance listen you can tell a story but when you preach the gospel you preach the crucifixion and resurrection of jesus christ you preach the christ saved christ healed christ delirium are you listen to me no i'm not criticizing listen beloved the bible said you should know the truth and the truth should set you free the majority of our preachers today is spending that time defending sinners and sin. When they need to be preaching against sin, the preachers are all preached against sin. Ozzy, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, them preached against sin. Jesus preached against sin. Paul, John, and James, they preached against sin. They was not taken up for sin. They were not defending sin. Oh, can't nobody live perfect. But you know, we all are weak. And they're going to stay weak longer you preach a weak gospel. But I come to tell you, Jesus Christ loved you. He came to save men from their sin, not in their sin. You believe it? Say mine. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus looked out one day. The Bible said he was moved with compassion because he seen a group of people as people without a shepherd. Didn't say they didn't have a shepherd, but the shepherd they had was not feeding them. Listen, since when did it's more important to get people healed? Now don't misunderstand me. I believe in healing. Christ is a miracle work. He's a healer. But the point is, I'm asking the question, when has it become more important for people to be healed and continue in sin than to be born again? When has it become more important for you to drive a nice car and have a nice home and still be in sin? Lord, give us children as we die. Hallelujah. Are oh, you listen to me today? Listen, beloved, we got this thing turned around. We ought to be like Rachel. The church need to get on the knees and cry. Lord, give us children or let me die. We need to get hungry for lost souls. On my way to church today, I seen the ballparks fall. Oh, 
middle-aged insurance. Not a care in the world about who's keeping them alive. Not concerned about the work of God. And many churches are full. We are carrying on in church. When the devil is taking off the kids and changing them to lesbian prostitutes, Amen. drug addicts, Amen. and we shouting and dancing in the house of God. Amen. Lord, give us truth. That's our time. We need to cry, God, we need a revival that will bring men and women under conviction, not dried out confessions. Preacher, we need a quick break and something decision. Let's get some conviction in the house of God. You believe it? Say amen. Men and women need to be preached under conviction till they come crying. What must I do to be saved? <laughs> women don't want to be women's anymore. Men doesn't want to be men's anymore. Women doesn't want to look like women's anymore and this is the day and the time that we're looking in the church is just like that amen you can't tell the church from the world amen oh that's plenty of preaching but you there's no conviction why because preachers is the fed of preach against sin amen they want to make you comfortable in your sin listen beloved that's not going to do you any good amen Listen, if you want to go back with Jesus when he come, the preacher got to preach to preach that you sin or send you to hell, but forgiveness of your sin can save you and get you ready to go back with Jesus when he come. You believe it? Say amen. Listen, the church needs to get on her knees, grab the horn of the altar and cry out again. That God would give us children unless we die. I'm talking about children, pray God, that will come into the kingdom of God and change their life and live a life of righteousness for Christ. You believe it? Say amen. And these type of revivals come through praying and fastening, delicating ourselves to God and righteous living. Amen. You believe it? Say amen. amen. This woman wanted to try. I want to buy children. And her husband, he did everything he could to make her happy. But she said, I will not be happy to pray that God give me a child. Amen. And the church shouldn't be happy till we see the drug addict lay that drugs down and come in and be saved to the prostitute come out the street and let God save her when there's a hunger for God more than anything else in the world. You believe it, say amen. Lord, give me children unless I die. If you read in the word of God, that will not only Rachel, Rachel cried out to God that God gave her a son. That son become a great deliverer in the land of Egypt. Hannah prayed and cried because she wanted a child. She was barren. God heard her cry and gave her a child. He become one of the greatest prophets and walked in the Old Testament. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? John the Baptist's mother was barren, and she cried. And God gave her son, John the Baptist. Wait, let's look at it. These women were married women. They was not bringing children into the world out of wedlock. Oh, we got people, pray God, it's like that today. Got five kids, and each one of them got a different daddy. When we look at the church, it's the same way. We got folks in the church with different daddies. You believe it? Say, man, I'm talking about naturally. Oh, you listen to me. I'm talking about spiritually. Amen. Pray God. No conviction. See, when you've been preached on conviction, you realize you're wrong and you want to do what's right. And when you come to God, God will save you. You cannot be saved in your sin. You, there's no such thing as saved sinners. You believe it? Say amen. Oh, you listen to me. The gospel changed life. The apostle Paul declared, Romans 1 and 16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it's the power of God and the salvation to them that believe. Listen, regardless of what you're bound by, God can deliver you and set you free. This woman would not be satisfied. I don't care what her husband did for her. She was not satisfied. Can you visualize every time he come home, she was crying? Hallelujah. My, that home must have been miserable. He did everything he could. Hallelujah. To satisfy her. But when there's a hunger for God, that's nothing natural that you can do to satisfy the hunger for God. 
Listen, beloved, everybody's not coming to the church house. Amen. We must get home enough for God and cry out. Pray God and go out to the Bible and they had it and tell people that God loved them and Christ died, that they could be saved, that they could be delivered, and they could be set free. Amen. God said Rachel looked like a woman. She was built like a woman. She talked like a woman. She dressed like a woman. She acted like a woman. But she couldn't produce. Just looking like a church doesn't make it a church. Just singing, putting a choir in there doesn't make it a church. Hallelujah, getting the guitar, playing drums does not make it a whole in this church. That's got to be a change. Can you believe it? Say amen. When I look at the condition of what's going on today, people, praise God, they're rejoicing because of great cry, and they're not jealous of the great cry. But pray God, if God is not delivering and changing life, what good is it to have a crowd? You believe it? Say amen. God sent those people down that you might preach the gospel, that they might hear, believe, and be saved in a place where you're entertaining folks. Shouting sinners and saints alike. Pray God to the day and time that we live in now, and the sinner can come sit right up on the front seat and be comfortable. I don't believe that the devil and his crowd should come to the house of God and be comfortable in the house of God. I believe that the presence of God should be all over that place. Amen. Are you listening to me? And minister getting up defending sinners. Oh, you know we are all weak. That's the reason we need the Savior. All of sin and come short of the glory of God. That's where we need God's saving grace in our soul. Listen, when God come into your life, you will not suck cigarettes any longer. When God come into your life, you will not be an alcoholic any longer. The good news is Jesus Christ can save you, but the church got to cry. Lord, give me children else I die. God is waiting for the invitation. You believe it? Say amen. Let's cry that God would save until people's lives be changed. Are you listen to me? Now, I'm a firm believer. When a child is birthed into this world, he should look like his daddy. Amen. Some parts of him should look like his daddy. Not the man across the hall. Not a man down the hall and across the street across town. Amen. His face may not look like it, but his ears, his nose, his toes or something ought to look like his daddy. You believe it? Say amen. Now, I'm a firm believer when you get saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, you've got no business coming here looking like the devil. You ought to look like your deliverer, Jesus Christ. You believe it? Say amen. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. All things become new. But in the church house today, you can't tell the difference. You believe it? Say amen. Because there is no difference. Because there no cry. Give me children or else I die. Hallelujah. No, not that you're above sinners, but you, you're required to tell them the truth that they could be saved. I'm not against you. Amen. But God gave me a message. That message is to cry out against sin and then let you know that Jesus loved you. This is why God sent his son. This is why his son went to Calvary and died, that you could be saved, that you could be delivered and set free. And these benefits are added, such as God blessing you, healing your body, meeting your needs. But love, I would that thou may prosper, and be in health as thy soul prosper, as your soul prosper. Get saved first. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm a firm believer. You've got no been looking like your, your father, the devil. Amen. Amen. Saying you're saved. That's a difference, you know. The Bible said put a difference between holy and unholy. Amen. Amen. I'm the Lord thy God that changes not. When God comes into a person's life, he changes you. He makes you brand new. If you hadn't been made brand new, then you still need deliverance. Amen. You believe it's him. Lord, give me children. Or is I die. Amen. I want you to think. Listen, when the church really gets on fire for God, when she really get hungry for souls, then we're going to see God move in a supernatural way. Amen. Pray. We have, we've got folk coming into the church, but their lives are not changed. They want to bring everything that they was doing out there in the world in the church. 
movie star want, want to jump from stardom in the world to stardom in the church. It don't work like that. Amen. Come, come on me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Listen, brother, you that under the sound of my voice, God loves you. Regardless of your condition, God loves you. And God stands ready to do something for you. But there must be a desire to come to God. There must be a desire to be saved, to be delivered, and to be set free. Listen, beloved, to be saved doesn't mean to be delivered. It means to be set free from sin. Amen? I know that sounds kind of tight, but that's the word of God. The Bible the cloud, praise God in it. First John 3 and 8, he that commits sin is of the devil. These, these preachers won't mention those scriptures. He said, but for this call was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. That devil is working in you. Listen, if you believe the gospel, it will destroy that work in you and make a new creature out of you. Some of you are burning down, breaking because of sin. I realize you can't help it. That's when I'm preaching the gospel like this. Listen, you can't help a man when you're preaching weak gospel and you are siding with him and sympathizing with him in his sin. I come to tell you, not me, but I'm serving a man that's able to save you, that's able to deluce you, that's able to set you free. But the church got to get stirred. You have to be say, man, like Rain to Lord, give me trivial as yes, I die. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Are you listening? Give me children. Or uh, else I die. That woman prayed. Amen. She cried till she got through to God. And God gave her a man child. His name was Joseph. He was a forerunner for the deliverance of Israel. Down in Egypt, that was a fame and coming. Hallelujah. And God had already placed a man down in Egypt to take care of his people. See what happened when you cry out, Lord, give me children, or else I die. What if Rachel had not have cried? What might have happened? Amen. But when the fame and come, pray God Joseph was a sucker in command. When God's people got there, Joseph had the key to the coin grab. When he got to him, he fed him. Amen? When he's a cry that God would send us children. Amen? Remember, pray God, if you don't produce children, sooner or later your name is going to die. We must produce. God told the church to be, pray God, Adam and Eve, he said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. But some man said, oh, we got too many folks in the world. We're going to have to limit the breath. Who are you? God said, be fruitful and multiply and repent. He the one created the heaven and the earth. You believe it? Say, man, women are crying. Pray it. I want an abortion. You don't need no abortion. If you don't want the child, then don't do what it takes to get the child. You believe it? Say, man. No, but you want the pleasure, but you don't want the responsibility. Oh, I see. Wickedness in the land. The Bible called the man of God to cry against this wickedness. Show my people the house of Jacob their sin and their transgression. Show it to them so they have the knowledge to come out. Are you listening to me? Lord, give us children. Amen. When the church gets on fire for God, revival comes through, travailing before God. Oh, we can set meetings. We can call them revival. But you know what a revival is? It's when God steps down from heaven right in the midst of us and the anointing brings men and women under conviction. Hello, brother. I read a revival when people was on the streets and was gripped with the fear of God. Pray God dancing and honky tonks and all the ones they was gripped with the fear of God. Why? Because somebody was crying out, give us children unless I die. Listen, you gotta be hungry for God more than you do anything else in the world. I got a lot of pray the so-called saints sitting at home this morning. Amen. Feeling sorry for yourself. Shame on you. Amen. Then the Bible said, when you receive the Holy Ghost, behold, I give you power over the power of the enemy. 
God did not fill us with the Holy Ghost to go out and try to perform a few miracles on somebody, praise God, or deadbeat, praise God, just want healing in the body. Somebody just want the burden lifted off of them. That wasn't what the Holy Ghost was given to us for. It was given us to go forth and preach the gospel. Him to be saved, man. That folk would be saved, they would be healed, they would be delivered and set free. These benefits follow your salvation, not ahead of it. Empty hands laid on empty heads. We talk about God working miracles. One of the greatest miracles God can perform in a person's life when that person gets saved, when God turns his life around. We have people all over this auditorium and across this world and many other ministers that stand up and preach the gospel. Oh, we're not going to be popular in this world. Jesus said, you're in the world, but you're not of the world. Woe unto you and all man of man speak well of you. But if the world is, is proud of you, then you're not a servant of God. Hallelujah. We are here to bring a message to you. Praise God in love and compassion, letting you know that Jesus loved you, that Jesus is a deliverer. That's what he told us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He didn't tell us to go out and try to perform pray God, miracles on sinners and, and we failed to tell them the truth. So many times I watch and see people praise God, even though they receive a miracle, the minister failed to give them instruction how they could go on with God. What did Jesus tell the man that had just been healed at the pool? When he found him in the temple, what did he tell him? Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. Lesson, what's the things come up on you? We fail to give them the instruction that they need that they can go on with God. Listen, but when God heals your body, he forgives you your sin, and you will go and sin no more. Amen. Hallelujah. What did you tell the woman that was caught in the dust? Pray God. She said she had no accusers. He said, woman, where are thou accusing? She said, I don't have one. He said, well, neither do I. Go and sin no more. He did not turn her loose where she could continue to commit adultery. He said, go and sin no more. I'm, I'm going to let you. That's what grace is. Grace bigger is forgive. The law could not forgive. The grace forgive. It does not let you all. Somebody, oh, we under grace. We're not under the law. You know what the grace teaches in Titus 2 and 11? That the, the grace that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust, that we live sober, righteous, and godly in this present world. So there's no license to sin. Do you hear me, beloved? There's no license to sin. Grace teaches we should deny ungodliness and worldly lust. This means some of you can't come to church because you're waiting on the game this evening. If you're tired of God, you're going to forget about that game. Get to, you should be out trying to win souls for the Lord and sitting up in some bleachers watching some worldly game. Oh, yes, I said it. You believe it? Say, man. We should be out buying our father's business. If any man a friend of the world is an enemy to God, love not this world, neither the things that are in the world. God is. Oh, you listen to me. Listen, beloved. God love you. This woman wasn't playing. When she looked around, seeing all her peers having children, that she was without one. She'd been married long enough, but she didn't have any children. She was stirred. You know why this world is such bad shape? Because we are less the principles and the doctrine of the Word of God. Amen. Women don't have time to have children. Amen. The Bible said, replenish, be fruitful and we replenish the earth. But no, you don't want that now. You'd rather drive an 18-wheeler than to be a mother. That's your job, not the nursery to train your children. It's not the school to train your children. That's the mother's job. The husband's job is to be the provider, not you. This thing is turned around. This way is in chaos today because we failed to do what God has called us to do. Lord, give me children. How many of you, praise God, want to birth a child into the world? He go grow up to be a drug addict, a pimp, a man, a murderer, daughter, prostitute. 
a lesbian. This is what's happening because we fail to cry out against sin and tell people the truth. The Bible said, train up a child in the way it should go. Then when it get old, it won't depart from it. Saints, we got a job. Amen. 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 That daughter, maybe it's not yours, but that daughter has a mother. That daughter has a father somewhere. We need to cry that God would save that daughter. We need to cry that God would save that young man. I mean, change his life. That's the only way you can be saved. Your life has to be changed. Amen. But you want the pleasure of both worlds. You can't have it. And the devil paints you a picture, man. It's dull to serve God. Listen, the Bible says that joy, righteousness, and holy, opening the Holy Ghost. That's why you'll find deep joy, deep satisfaction. It's on the Lord's side. It's being saved. It's being delivered. It's being set free. Remember, I say, pray God, when you birth into the world, you should have something about you resemble your father, not the man across the hall, not the man down the street. And I firmly believe that way about God's children. Brother, if you've been born again, you ought to look like God, not like the devil in his crew. Amen. Amen. Something about you ought to pray God resemble Jesus Christ.